What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today I have a deck to show you. A deck which is a very, very good deck, and I know that for certain. Because this weekend we had the first Vault Tour over in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. There was one deck that went 6 and 0 oh during day one. So I think that's probably a pretty good deck. And honestly, looking at the deck list, it's disgusting. Bit of a pun there, because we need to start off having a look at this. And this has just one of the most annoying combos I've seen in a deck so far. First of all, we've got a copy of Ember Imp. Ember Imp, I believe, is one of the most impactful cards we've got in Wave 1. It is a creature that prevents your opponent from playing more than two cards each turn. They can still use, they can still discard, but they cannot play more than two cards during a turn. That is going to severely limit their options. But there's also two copies of Succubus here. And Succubus says, during their draw card step, your opponent refills their hand to one less card. That's crazy. Because it doesn't say five rather than six, it says one less. So if you get both Succubus out at the same time, that is two less not one less. Plus, you've got an Ember Imp down as well. Also, I should mention, there's one copy of Toxin here that makes your opponent discard a random card from their hand when you reap. So, if you can sit there making them draw fewer cards and then discarding with Toxin, you are going to significantly reduce the amount of options that they've actually got here. And then, just in case you weren't disrupting them enough, how about Snudge? Which returns an artifact or flank creature to its opponent's hand. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But the other thing that this deck does supremely well is making it extremely difficult for you to forge a key. You see, there is a copy here of the artifact Lash of Broken Dreams. Now, this is not always in play. The ability, I mean, to the artifact is. The artifact has to be used. You have to have a disc turn, and you have to use the action. But when you do, keys cost plus three during your opponent's next turn. That's kind of annoying. But there's also two grabber jammers here. Now, this is a skill which is just always in play. For each grabber jammer that you've got down, your opponent's keys cost one more ember to forge. Yeah. So, it's not like you're always going to have this, but two grab a jammer down, and then you use Lash of Broken Dreams, and all of a sudden, your opponent isn't paying six ember to forge a key. They're paying 11 ember to forge a key. And might I remind you at this stage, you've got Ember Imp, you've got Succubus, you've got Toxin, so you are severe severely hurting their options in terms of what they can draw and what they can do, and then you're vastly increasing the cost of forging a key, and at this stage you're probably starting to go, you know what, that's actually a pretty disgusting deck. I wasn't lying to you, ladies and gentlemen. I wasn't lying to you. Now, one of the things I adore about this deck, it's a Mars deck. I love Mars. People have not been giving Mars much credit. But the other thing I hear about Mars a lot is, you know what, Mars is good if you've got the right combos. If you can get the combos going, Mars becomes awesome. Cool. This might be one of the things we need. We've already mentioned grab a jammer, but we've got some really, really nice house cheating here. You see, there are three copies of John Smith. John Smith is a very, very good card. John Smith has elusive, which means you've got to attack it twice in order to try and take it down. And when you fight or you reap, you ready a non-agent Mars creature. Now, there's not a huge amount of creatures here. We've literally just got two Grabber Jammer and two YX Zelo Bolter. But still, you are cheating here. You are cheating to get extra things going on. I said house cheating. What I mean is you're cheating in terms of being able to do more than you should. So you reap with Grabber Jammer, which incidentally captures an ember. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
Then you reap with John Smith, and then you can reap with it again. So you get free Ember while capturing an Ember, and when Grabajama goes down, the Ember goes back to your opponent, that sucks, etc. This is very, very powerful. And... There's a copy of Squawker here that readies a Mars creature or stuns a non-Mars creature. So actually, you can ready potentially four extra creatures in a single turn. Tell me that doesn't sound redonk, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me it doesn't sound redonk. Now, the other house we haven't mentioned yet is Shadows. And look, Shadow Steel Ember. This is why... Shadows is so gosh darn good. Because you steal Ember, which means you gain and your opponent loses at the same time, and then they can't forge a key. And there's a lot here that we've got. And the first one we've got to mention, obviously we've got to mention it, it's Bait and Switch. I did my top 10 cards from Keyforge yesterday, I'll pop a link in the description. And the number one, I'm going to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen, it, it wasn't particularly close, was Bait and Switch. It is the best card in Wave 1. Bait and Switch says, if your opponent has more Ember than you, steal one. Repeat this card's effect if your opponent still has more Ember than you. So if they start with an even number of Ember, you get half of it, and you end with the same amount as them. But if they start with an odd number of Ember, you actually finish with one more than them. If they've got 12 or more Ember, you just get enough to forge a key next turn. That's ridiculous. You can stop and forging a key, but of course it gets better. We've got two copies of Ghostly Hand, double Ember bonus when you play it. And if your opponent has exactly one Ember, steal it. We've got Nerve Blast, which steals an Ember, and if you do, you deal two damage to a creature. We've got Relentless Whispers, that deals two damage to a creature, and if it destroys them, steal an Ember. We've got one of the very best turn one cards possible in Treasure Map. Gives you an Ember bonus, and if you've not played any other cards this turn, gain free Ember. But then you can't play any more cards. So if you get this turn one, going first, you can only play one card. Play it down, get free Ember. Although incidentally, as far as I'm concerned, the very best turn one card is actually Ember Imp, which is also in this deck. That's a bit silly. We got Seeker Needle that deals one damage to a creature, and if you destroy it, you gain one Ember. Clearly kind of the opposite of nerve blast we've got one copy of skeleton key okay it captures an ember rather than steals but it still stops your opponent forging so that's all right carlo phantom gets you an ember steals an ember every time you play an artifact dodger steals an ember when you fight and umbra steals an ember when you fight and has skirmish there is a lot of of stealing going on here with shadows but it actually gets better we we can actually do better because you see there's two copies of shula here when you play it if your opponent has four or more ember you steal one well that's pretty gosh darn good the terror if your opponent has no ember you gain two now that's not stealing ember but essentially, what you can try and do here is steal the last of their Ember and then play the Terror to take advantage of it. I've already mentioned Grab a Jammer, each of which can capture one Ember per turn, which seems a little bit mean. And you're left with so many options for getting rid of your opponent's Ember. And to me... That seems like the overwhelming strength of this deck. You've got that combination of ridiculous ridiculous options to steal ember combined with all of this disruption that we've got in this and the extra creatures you can constantly use with mars and essentially you can go hey i'm playing this you're getting massively disrupted have fun trying to do anything you can go mars and go actually i'm going to do way more than i should be allowed on this turn and if i'm reaping i'm getting so much ember or you can play shadows and just steal all of their ember. There are so many options. And the last theme that we need to look at. Cheeky damage slash destroying creatures. You can do a lot of damage to creatures here without ever fighting. You've got gateway to this which destroys each creature. Yours and your opponents and you get free chains. You've got free fates that destroys the three most powerful creatures. Your creatures in this ain't that powerful ladies and gentlemen. You are not rocking particularly powerful creatures. Ooh, P 
Pit Demon. Five power. Incidentally, I should have mentioned Pit Demon earlier. It's got an action which steals an ember. It's just one more way of stealing ember. It's a bit over the top. Now, we've also got, if we head on into Mars, we've got Orbital Bombardment. Reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card revealed, deal two damage to a creature. Phosphorus Star stuns each non-Mars creature, yours and your opponent's. You gain two chains. Squawker can stun a non-Mars creature. Remember, this isn't destroying, but it, it basically does the same thing, so I'm going to allow it. Yxelo Bolter deals two damage to a creature when you fight or reap, and if it destroys them, you purge them. And we've got Nerve Blast which deals two damage to a creature. Oubliette, which purges a creature power free or lower. And Relentless Whispers, that deals two damage to a creature. Oh yeah, and I did mention Seeker Needle earlier, which deals damage to a creature. These are pre-constructed decks made with an algorithm. You want to be able to do stuff here. You want some certain themes. And here, We've got stealing, and we've got disruption, and we've got cheating to do more stuff, and we've got cheeky damage, and it all adds up to a redonkulous deck. Now, there are just a couple of cards I've not mentioned yet, so I should jump in quickly and finish off here, shouldn't I? Martians make bad allies. Reveal your hand, purge each non-Mars creature, and gain one ember for each card purged this way. You don't really want to go purging all your Dis and Shadows creatures. But late in the game to win, I can see you wanting to do this. This could be the difference. And then we've got a copy of Biometrics Backup. Gives you an ember bonus and the creature to which it is attached gains destroyed. Put this creature in your archives. And then, of course, you can then grab it at the beginning of your next turn. Really good if your opponent takes down something like your Ember Imp and you get it right back. Or they take down one of your Succubus and you get it right back. This is a disgusting deck, but I love it. As long as I'm not playing against it, I do not want to play against this deck. One of the things I love about Keyforge, even though these decks are made with an algorithm, sometimes like this, you look at a deck and you go, well, of course it's really good. That's over the top good. So it went 6-0 with day one. I'm going to be very excited to see how it does when we get to top cut but for now ladies and gentlemen i would like to know what you think about this deck so please let me know your thoughts in the comment section go nuts but please do remember the rule be nice would you and then make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel and follow me on twitter at the wassy where we talk about keyforge and other games but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching Wassy plays.